Hi there, my name is John Stevens. I'm pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Oregon City, Oregon, and we are part of the ELCA and welcome to Dollar Store Children's Sermons, where we take a look at the lectionary text and we tie them to an item from the Dollar Tree or the junk drawer or the kids' room or the garage. You know how we've been doing it. Thank you so much for the love that you're sharing with your kids and your congregations and your families. You are rocking it, my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your partnership in this ministry. And thanks you for spending a little... Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for spending a little bit of your week with me in this way. All right. This is for the Narrative Lectionary, and we are... In uh, the Lord's Prayer series, last week I did uh, just had it for the Trinity Sunday. Um, so, but we're kind of we're getting into the Lord's Prayer, the series of the Lord's Prayer, and we're jumping right into week two since last week was the commentary and the text for week one. Here's week two, and it's Hallowed Be Your Name, and the idea about. God's name being holy, that God is holy, that God set apart for the bettering, for the bettering of this world. We are set apart for the bettering of this world. God created this world and God is holy. So I'm going to talk about what holy means. And especially when God calls us holy, when we have been deemed holy and as saints set apart for the kingdom of God, for, for restoring this world, for being workers in the kingdom, in the kingdom and all of that. So uh, something that's really important to you that you put up on a shelf, and it doesn't stay on the shelf. Well, maybe it shouldn't stay on the shelf, but sometimes hallowed or holy, it's, it, holy means set apart. So that when in the waters of baptism, we are set apart. In, in the promise of God, in the, in the sacraments, we are set apart. God claims us, holds us, and sets us apart. And God's name is holy. And we set that apart. And setting apart doesn't mean we remove it, but it's a way of lifting up and pay, paying attention to what is important, and what is crucial, what is life-giving. And so in that, um, we see that God's name is, God's not only God's name is holy, but God is holy. Hallowed be your name. So, um we can kind of look at the connection of the Lord's Prayer to uh, the Ten Commandments that uh, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain and talk about when we see something as holy, when we pay attention and we give it the, the honor and reverence that it is, uh, that it's due. That's, we've got to work on that phrase, but still, um, we see that it's more than just, we don't, we don't swear, that we don't use God's name as a swear word. That's part of it, um, because when we do that, we're just like casting casting the name of God out. Um, but there's so much more to that. That's just like, that's like you've got, that's like the tip of the iceberg. Because there's so much when it comes to God's name being holy and not taking God's name in vain. So when um, I say that I'm a follower of God, I'm a follower of Jesus when I say, you know, you know, God, I'm a follower of you and I'm going to look at my neighbor and I'm going to treat them like trash. No, that in a way, as I'm saying that I'm a follower of God and then I treat my neighbor this way, I'm taking God's name in vain. When I say God, God told me to tell you that you are not worth the skin you are in. That's taking God's name in vain. And when we look at hallowed be your name, how do we use and how do we represent God in this world? Now, we are going to stumble. We are going to trip. We are going to mess up. And God loves us and God redeems us and God holds us close. And then we go, God, help me. So in the prayer of the Lord's Prayer, when we say hallowed be your name, it's another way of saying, God, help me. See your name as holy. Help me show the world that you are for us and that you love us dearly. So the, I, so the item, the object, the item I'm using is, and I don't have it actually picked out yet, but I've got a few 
um, items. I have a poem that my grandmother wrote me in her in her handwriting with a, a coffee ring that as she set the coffee her coffee cup on the paper she was writing. I have that framed over there. That's very important for me. So that's kind of set apart. And it says something about the author of that poem. It says something about my grandmother and what she means and meant to me. What she means to me and meant because she has passed, but she still means that to me. So that for me, that's set apart and that's holy. And it tells me something about the author. And that goes into the direction of hallowed be your name. God's name is holy. And how we treat that name tells us and tells the world that we what we think about the author of our lives and that being God all right so there's stuff in here that I wouldn't probably uh, add into the children's sermon but would flow over into the larger sermon um, but I'm hoping something in here uh, can be useful for your own children's sermon again thank you for being here thank you for spending a little bit of your week with me thank you for your partnership in this ministry but most importantly thank you for the love that you're sharing with your kids and your congregations and your families you are rocking it. All right? Peace.